Dumsy drip, Dumsy drip, Dumsy drip, Dumsy drip, Dumsy drip, Dumsy drip. Where'd you move here from? Dumsville? Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. Um, this movie is meant for kids, not adults, so where did you miss that? It's obviously going to be cringe. Why do you hate this movie so much? It's just a fucking kids movie. Hmm, movie does seem good. Maybe because it was meant for kids? Bro, why are y'all hating on this movie so much? It's a kids movie. What would you expect? Truella is a great movie. These things that you say don't really matter because the plot is designed for kids. Even though the movie is PG-13? Ever since I started doing film reviews on this channel, one argument has stood out to me. It's just a kid's movie. Every once in a while, someone will comment down, it's just a kid's movie. Chill out, dude. And every time it does, it kinda interests me? Not exactly in a good way. In fact, it kinda terrifies me. But it gets me on all these different tangents about demographics, art, how we decipher art, how we define what is and isn't art, and the unfortunate cyberpunk dystopian hell we put ourselves through each and every day. But enough about Lucasfilm, am I right? Now look, honestly, I kinda get it. Quote-unquote kids movies, simply put, aren't made for adults. Now, I do think the term kids movie is actually pretty misleading. When I think of, like, a kids movie or a kids TV show, I think of, like, Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer. These are made for kids who lack cognitive functions. What are you gonna critique narratively? Why is it that human porn is okay, but dragon porn is generally frowned upon? Dragons are much more attractive. When it comes to works like Alpha and Omega, like The Lorax, like Open Season, Hugo, Smurfs, oh, Alvin, literally any Disney movie, these aren't really made for kids. They're made for the whole family. But of course, due to marketing and demographics, yeah, who gives a shit? Either way, all these movies are made for a younger demographic. All of that is true and completely fine. Families can and should have works of art they can all enjoy together, especially the children. In my opinion, art, whether it's movies, TV shows, video games, what have you, are a great way to emotionally understand the world around us. In a similar way to how science helps us understand the world in a biological sense, uh, Boy, if you art can help us understand the world in a more emotional sense. And kids should have access to that. However, here comes the problem. First of all, kids grow up. And as kids grow older, they become depressed alcoholics. Trust me, I would know. But as you grow older, you want to look back on your memories fondly. And wouldn't it be awesome if that movie you loved as a kid was just as good now? as it was back then, that, I think, is the ultimate goal of a good family film. If anything, it's probably harder to write a good family movie than it is to write a good adult movie. You're essentially writing a movie for two people, a kid and the grown-up version of that kid. And that requires a lot of nuance and effort. And like I said earlier, art helps us understand the world, and kids are still wandering this world without a clue of what exactly they're doing. This is where insert artistic medium here comes in. Art can help children explore themselves in a very entertaining way. Way. It can provide them assurance or even just escapism. Art can help kids escape from the harsh realities of the real world, or maybe even help them confront it. This is what makes art really valuable to me, especially art made for families and or children. In a world as uncertain as ours, art isn't just valuable to adults, it's valuable to the younger generations too. But that leads into the second problem, nobody <laughs> gives a shit. As said earlier, children are still developing, which makes them a lot more naive and a lot more easy to manipulate. As well as a lot more immature. Not only that, but the end result of producers and studios isn't to make the best art possible, but rather how much money can we make from this? Hi everyone, my name's Barbara Gold. This is a problem in any genre, any media, but kids' movies are certainly no exception. Illumination is the perfect example of this. On top of butchering the Lorax, a work that in its original source material actually adheres to what I've been talking about thus far, Illumination has publicly admitted to making cheaper animated films. But that way it's easy to recoup costs and spend more money on Please marketing. Don't believe me? It's all in the numbers. Did you know that the Lorax struck more than 70 different product integration deals for the movie? It's called consolidation. Strengthen governments and corporations. Weaken individuals. Now, of course, this isn't exclusive to kids' movies. And I understand, filmmaking is a business, a very lucrative one. And of course, people gotta make money somehow. But sadly, the cost just so happens to be artistic integrity. Patrick, you should make a good movie. No, I can't take the time off work. And once again, the kids are super easy to manipulate. So it's no shock that marketing costs go up to... Uh, who gives a shit? Look, 
I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? Long story short, dumb children equals big money. And you all fell for it. Due to this and nearly a hundred years of American culture, there's been a really distinct quality line between how we criticize adult works and how we criticize children's works. Unfortunately, this line gets really blurry sometimes. For example, did you know that Star Wars was made for 12-year-old boys? You know, it's a film for 12-year-olds. There you go, guys. It's official. Arguably the largest multimedia sci-fi franchise of all time. Yeah, just a kid's movie. And here lies the main problem with the it's just a kid's movie argument. It completely devalues art. Once again, yeah, there are topics kids' movies just can't explore. But that doesn't mean it's any less art. The bottom line, art is art. No matter who it's made for. And if art fails to be art, then it should be criticized for it. Once again, I'm not saying every art piece has to be some deep character philosophical study. It's similar to how not every painting has to be a Salvador Dali painting. That's the beauty of art. You can do so much shit with it. So many possibilities. So much stuff you can do to help interpret the world around you. So when a movie does the bare fucking minimum, you bet your ass I'm gonna get pissed off. Once again, the definition of what exactly is a kid's movie is still pretty unclear. Especially to random YouTube commenters. I see this argument used against me on both my Max Steel and Cruella videos. Which, by the way, both movies are PG-13, with the former movie having a full-on F-word drop. So in that case, what even is a kid's movie anymore? But you know what? For the sake of argument, let's pretend that these two opinions are not valid at all. Which they weren't anyways. And that any kid's movie is simply a movie that's PG and under. Now, yes, the contextual audience behind kids' movies and adult movies are different. But that doesn't really mean a whole lot. It just means that I can't relate to Turning Red because they didn't do massive amounts of heroin in it. Also, what about great kids' movies? Are those works of art suddenly invalidated too? Works like Fantastic Mr. Fox and The Lego Movie are, in my opinion, modern masterpieces. Spider-Verse is widely considered to be one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made. Toy Story 2 explores isolation and abandonment. The Incredibles is basically about a midlife crisis. And Space Jam 2 has Big Chungus in it. If you can't criticize kids' movies because they're made for kids, then wouldn't the opposite also be true? That there's a quality ceiling on how good a kids' movie can actually be? Then in that case, once again, we're just devaluing the art form. You can make an amazing masterpiece of cinema, but because the movie's made for an inherently younger demographic, all of a sudden, it's only good for a kids' movie. A masterpiece film doesn't have to have adult themes in it. It just needs to have great themes and do a good job of executing them. But the implications of this argument pretty much ignore that and ignore the influence of an entire genre. What about other mediums? Every single Mario game innovates with each entry, becoming the gold standard for level design. Crash and Spyro were technical showpieces for their hardware, despite only being children's games. It's all just stupid platformers, like Mario, that's their biggest title. Like I said earlier, art is art, and by that extension, high quality art is high quality art. The truth be told, I don't think what demographic a movie is made for matters that much. At least not as much as we think it does. And if it does matter, that doesn't mean the quality should be worse. As an artist, I think you should use your artistic platform to reach out to as many kids as possible. Kids go through a lot of shit. Sometimes they go through shit they should never have to go through. But what better way to teach them than through the act of creating narrative art? We've been doing this since Aesop's Fables. Art is a powerful tool, no matter who it's made for. But the it's just a kid's movie argument just completely ignores this. Suddenly, the past millennium of artistic development is just completely nullified. And once again, so is integrity in general. And once those are removed, you're no longer making art, you're making products. Now, of course, yeah, there's a limit. For example, if you're like a grown-ass adult and all you consume is children's media, and you write like a hundred writing tips and they're all just criticisms towards a she then in that case, yeah, the it's just a kid's movie argument works here. And on that note, uh, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> you gotta be ashamed of yourself. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. You gotta watch some Martin Scorsese or something. But I digress. Despite and or with the exception of the context behind the movie's demographic, I try to look at all art equally. Are the themes great? Is the writing good? Did the movie try and be a genuine piece of art? This is why a film like Alpha and Omega is my least favorite movie of all time. And it's also why Alpha and Omega 4 is better than The Matrix Resurrections. When it comes to the quality of a movie, demographics really don't matter that much. At least, not nearly as much as we're led to believe. And yet, this is exactly what this argument implies. Apparently, you can't be critical of kids' movies because they're just kids' movies. Truly, we live in a George Orwellian society. This is like George Orwell's 
a book, 1984. Well, wait a minute, couldn't this potentially lead to better movies than its genre? Filmmakers and animators can learn from these pitfalls. Whoa, it's almost like this argument is purely made to lazily deflect criticism, only to ignore the idea of making better movies in the future. Of course, not every criticism is valid. But that's where discernment comes in. Criticism is itself a part of the filmmaking process. It's important to be critical and to give proper feedback where needed. Wouldn't that be awesome if we got more and more awesome movies from- Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. Oh, uh, well, the point is art is art. And the idea of a movie just being a kid's movie is really devaluing two art. Instead of passing off a kid's movie as just being a kid's movie, instead try and ask yourself, did it do a good job being a kid's movie? Does it help children conquer a certain part of life? Are the writing and characters top notch? Is this movie a cynical product or a heartfelt story? Those are the questions you should be asking. Remember, the best children's works aren't just the ones that kids can enjoy. They're the ones those kids can appreciate when they grow up. To quote C.S. Lewis, a children's story that can only be enjoyed by children is a bad children's story. Works that can't be appreciated over time go the way of Alpha and Omega. Works that have negative cultural value and end up just getting forgotten by people who aren't furries or YouTubers. But when you make a great kid's work, one that everyone can enjoy, then you've positively influenced an entire generation. That, to me, sounds like kids' movies deserve more credit than just a kid's movie. They deserve to be labeled as what they are, art. And basically what I'm saying is Alpha and Omega still fucking sucks. Hey, before I go, uh, we have Dumsy merch now. That's right, we officially have Dumsy drip. We have shirts, sweaters, mugs, bucket hats, so much more. We're currently working on more products and designs, all that is coming soon. This is 100% Dumsy certified drip and will attract you some fair maidens. Link is down below, get yourself some Dumsy drip and let the streets know who you represent and I think that's the, how it works. video of a car being hit by lightning on the highway. Now we're speaking with the family inside the vehicle when Mother Nature struck. I mean, it's crazy. It was unreal. I was on my uh, iPad playing Fortnite mobile, about to drop a fucking 50 bomb. You could ask anybody who plays Fortnite on a mobile, 50 bomb? That alone will give you legendary status. But next thing you know, 300 million volts of electricity is being struck through my body, fucking through my iPad out the window. And my theory is that Elon Musk is up there shooting laser beams at anything that's not a Tesla. You don't know what he's doing up there. I don't know what he's doing up there. Camera guy has no idea.